Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you, Anita, John, Paul, and Georgia Hamilton, and Nailama to for joining class this morning. Uh, can one of you please lead us in prayer, please? Anyone? John, can you please lead us in prayer? Yes, Pastor. Let's pray. Father, we praise you and thank you for this morning. Lord, we as we come to your presence to learn from your word, we pray, oh God, that you would open the eyes of our understanding and help us to learn and help us to understand the thoughts that you have for your kingdom and let it be deeply rooted in us, God, and we would be able to apply this in our lives. We submit Pastor Selena into your mighty hands and declare your grace, your favor upon her life, Lord God, to teach your word, to guide us in your ways, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, John. Hi, Jepina. Welcome to class. Okay. So uh, last Wednesday, we were looking at uh, uh, chapter 3 in the, in the uh, book Kingdom Builders, uh, looking at how the Holy Spirit uh, directs us and leads us even as uh, we... Uh, build God's kingdom, even as we are invited by God to be partners, co-workers towards of his kingdom, to build his kingdom, to extend his kingdom here on earth, to, uh, you know, bring forth uh, his kingdom as it is in heaven, to do his will here, to bring about his kingdom reign, his kingdom purpose, uh, kingdom activity and uh, kingdom presence here on earth. So we were looking at how the Holy Spirit is our director, how he leads us and uh, uh, guides us. And we uh, we were looking uh, at, uh, we were on page number 23 in the PDF uh, uh, notes. We were looking at how the Holy Spirit, um, you know, when we pray in the Spirit, how the Holy Spirit uh, helps us to understand the purposes of God. So the Holy Spirit reveals uh, the mind of God to us. That means he reveals the plans, the purposes that God has for us, uh, and that the Holy Spirit makes it known to us. And uh, we looked at 1 Corinthians chapter 2, uh, verses 9 and 10 and verse 16, and says that because the Holy Spirit instructs us and uh, reveals the uh, plans and the purposes of God to us, uh, hence we have the mind of uh, Christ. Okay, uh, so we uh, we will uh, continue in the same chapter. Uh, we look at how you know praying in the Spirit aligns our will to God's uh, will. Okay, uh, and uh, when Jesus, when he lived here on the earth, we read in Hebrews chapter five verses 7 to 9 that you know uh, when he lived here on this earth the days of his flesh he offered up prayers and supplications uh, with vehement cries and tears uh, because uh, to him who was able to save him from death um, and we see that even though he was a son even though he was God, even though he had uh, the, uh, you know, he, uh, his origin is that he is God, but he, you know, he gave up everything and uh, says, even though he became a man, but yet he learned obedience by the things which he uh, suffered. So Jesus himself learned obedience by the things he uh, suffered. He learned obedience means he, uh, you know, there was an alignment of his will to the Father's will. That means he was willing to submit uh, to the Father. He was willing to do what the Father wanted him to do. Uh, and hence he aligned his will to his Father's will. This is when he was in the flesh, when he uh, came here on this earth. So he learned, Jesus himself learned obedience uh, and the the phrase learning obedience means he aligned himself to the Father's uh, will. And one example we see of how he aligned himself to the Father's will is in uh, Matthew chapter 26, verses 38 to 39 and verse 42. Um, in the Garden of Gethsemane, you know, um, 
we know that uh, the time was uh, uh, at hand when Jesus was going to be, um, uh, you know, um, arrested and he's going to be crucified. And then he prays, uh, you know, Father, if this cup be taken away from me, uh, you know, let it be, but not as I will, but as you uh, will. It was not that Jesus was, uh, uh, you know, f afraid of dying on the cross, but it was because he was sinless. Uh, even though he was in the flesh, he had committed no sin, he was sinless. And uh, to take upon the sins of the world uh, was something that is so detestable to God. Uh, but Jesus, you know, uh, uh, just prayed and said, God, your Father, take away this cup, but if it's not your will, let your will be uh, done. So he was willing to align his will to the Father's um, uh, will. He was willing to take uh, the cup of suffering, drink the cup of suffering, take upon himself the sins of the whole um, world. And so we see that, you know, uh, 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 Jesus prayed three times, okay, in the Garden of Gethsemane. We see that he spent long times, long hours in prayer. Uh, so we see that prayer changes things. Prayer, when we pray, uh, it helps us to align our will to the Father's um, will. And in times of prayer, you know, um, God works in our hearts uh, where he reveals his plans and his purposes. He aligns uh, our will, our desires, our dreams uh, in uh, accordance to his plans, his, uh, uh, his purposes and his will uh, for our life. If you read in, if you look at uh, Romans chapter 8 verses 26 to uh, 27, it says that the Holy Spirit helps us in our uh, weakness when we do not know what we need to pray for uh you know for certain things or when we're going to struggles challenges uh you know we do not know what to pray for the holy spirit helps us in our uh, weakness the holy spirit makes intercessions for us uh with groans that cannot be uttered um and it says in verse 27 of romans chapter 8 he says he who searches the hearts knows the mind of the spirit uh, uh sorry he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according uh to the will of uh god okay so here this uh, scripture passage very familiar one it's a very powerful one you know it says the holy spirit helps us in our, our weaknesses the holy spirit helps us interceding it does not mean the holy spirit uh you know as it's normally said the holy spirit intercedes on behalf of us uh, but here it's the holy spirit actually intercedes along with us it's not that you know when we do not know what to pray for or we are just totally uh you know broken about something we're facing some challenges we just don't know what to pray words don't come out of our mouth it's not that the holy spirit uh and we are we are, we are praying and we, we, we just really don't know uh we are not able to articulate the right kind of words it's not that the holy spirit goes off somewhere else and you know he's interceding on behalf of us here it the 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 greek word for the word help uh likewise the spirit also helps us in our weakness the word the greek word for help when translated it means that you know the holy spirit along with us or together with us uh, you know uh so the holy spirit along with us uh together with us you know, uh, is helping us. So it's the Holy Spirit who is, uh, uh, you know, helping us to intercede, but it's the Holy Spirit that puts the prayer into our, uh, or the words into our hearts. It's not the Holy Spirit going away somewhere else and, and praying separately, but it's the Holy Spirit who actually is giving us uh, uh, the right words. So the Holy Spirit alongside with us, uh, together with us, uh, you know, uh, uh, takes hold of, okay? So it's taking hold of our weaknesses along with us. It's the Holy Spirit is helping us to pray. So who is having the weakness? It's uh, the saints, that is the people of God who, you know, times of difficulties, we do not know what to pray. Who is helping us in prayer? It's the Holy Spirit who's helping us to pray. Um, and uh, how is he helping us to pray by making intercession? So who is the inter who is making the intercession? It's the believer who is making the intercession along uh, with the Holy Spirit or with the help of the 
uh, Holy Spirit. And so where is the intercession coming from? It's not coming from, you know, the Holy Spirit is not praying somewhere else, but the intercession is coming from the heart of the uh, believer. Okay, and who is listening to the prayer? It is God. So the Holy Spirit, uh, you know, is uh, helping us to pray. Uh, he is putting uh, the words or uh, the groans or, uh, you know, we can also pray in the spirit. It's uh, the, the prayer is being expressed in inarticulate speech. Uh, so it's not something that the believer thinks or, uh, you know, knows what they're speaking. It can just be groans that are expressed in, in tongues or you're just crying or weeping, whatever fashion. It's the Holy Spirit who puts uh, the prayer in the heart of the uh, believer and it is, um, you know, and God is listening to our prayer. So how do we know that? Because it says that, uh, you know, he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according uh, to the will of uh, God. So here we still see that, the, uh, you know, God is looking into the heart of the believer. He knows what the Holy Spirit is saying uh, because uh, God, uh, God knows the mind of the spirit. And he also knows that, you know, this intercession is made according to the will of uh, God. So which means the believer does not know what to pray for, but the Holy Spirit is helping him to pray according to the will of God. And it's not coming out, it's coming out as groaning, uh, meaning it's a prayer that is coming from the Holy Spirit, but is being expressed in inarticulate speech. Um, and it's groaning that can be expressed in tongues, crying, weeping, whatever fashion. But uh, it results in prayer that is accordance to the will of God. Uh, and it, uh, it, it uh, results in helping the saints uh, in our uh, weakness. Okay, so this is what the Holy Spirit uh, does for us. Uh, he uh, intercedes on, uh, you know, helps us in intercession. He's the one who puts the, uh, the right prayers that is accordance with God's will into our hearts. And uh, we are able to um, pray. Okay, so that is what it means that the Holy Spirit also helps us in our weaknesses. It does not mean the Holy Spirit is interceding uh, for us, but it is the Holy Spirit alongside with us, together with us, taking hold of our weaknesses, putting the prayer in our uh, in our hearts, and we are and the prayer that is uh, is uh, coming out of the saint is in accordance with the will of God because it is revealed to us or it's put in our hearts by the Holy uh, Spirit. And because the Holy Spirit reveals the mind of God uh, to us, okay? So all that we saw in this uh, in this chapter three so far is how the Holy Spirit uh, helps us, directs us, leads us, even as uh, uh, we build God's um, kingdom, okay? We will look at um, how the Holy Spirit, uh, you know, gives birth uh, uh, to the things of God uh, in each person. And uh, we will just look at it from, uh, uh, you know, the life of Mary uh, when uh, the angel came and God chose her to, uh, you know, bear the Son of God and uh, the events that took place around uh, Jesus from the time, the time that he was conceived uh, by the power of the Holy Spirit in Mary's womb to the time that he was um, uh, you know, he was born here on this earth. Uh, so we look at the work of the Holy Spirit and uh, we'll not just look at how the Holy Spirit works, but uh, we will look at it in the context of how the Holy Spirit gives birth uh, to the things of God and the principles that we can learn of how the Holy Spirit uh, enables us to give birth uh, to the plans and the purposes uh, of God here on the earth so that we can be efficient kingdom builders so we can be mindful of how uh, God works, how the Holy Spirit leads us and um, guides us. So we're going to look at, uh, uh, it's called the Mary miracle, uh, which teaches us uh, uh, several things about how God releases the work of the Spirit uh, through human um, vessels. Okay. So the first thing we know is that, the, uh, you know, when the Holy Spirit releases uh, the plan uh, of God in our lives, or he wants to birth the plans and purposes of God in our lives, uh, we see that, um, 
you know, there is an appointed time when he uh, does it. There is a Kairos moment. We look at the Kronos time and the Kairos moment, okay, in a bit. But here we just look at, uh, you know, the work of the Spirit is released into the earth at the appointed uh, time. So uh, in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, uh, we see when Adam and Eve sin that, you know, uh, uh, God said, uh, the you know, when he was, uh, you know, punishing them, or he was pronouncing the judgment, uh, he said that, you know, I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. So if you look at uh, Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, uh, or if you are following the PDF, uh, you know, version, it's on page number 24. Okay, we are on page number 24. Or if you're looking at your Bibles, it's Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. Uh, here it says, between your seed and her seed. And so the... Uh, the Yes, there are two seeds here that is mentioned, two word uh, called seed. And the first seed that is mentioned in this verse is a small s, and the other seed is a capital S, which is re uh, referring to Jesus' uh, birth here on this earth. And it says that, you know, I'll put enmity between your seed and her seed. And, uh, you know, this is talking about, um, uh, you know, um, uh, Jesus is uh, coming into this world when he will be born here in this world. Uh, so the, uh, the you know, uh, Jesus' coming was foretold uh, right there in the Garden of Eden. And it was, uh, it took 400 years later from when God, uh, you know, foretold that there would be uh, the Messiah who would come. Uh, there was a gap of 4,000 years from when it was spoken of, it was foretold, and it's time of fulfillment when Jesus was born here on this earth. And in Galatians chapter 4, verse 4, it, we read that when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the uh, law. So in the fullness of time, that means in the right time. Yes, God uh, foretold this 4,000 years back, but in the fullness of time, in the Kairos moment, in the right time, you know, uh, Jesus came, uh, God became man. He came here on this earth. And, uh, you know, so here we see that when God speaks to us about the work uh, he wants us to do, he's calling us uh, to do. And when he uh, reveals it to us through the Holy Spirit uh, ahead of time, uh, you know, there might be many years that uh, there is a preparation time that he's preparing us uh, before he releases his work uh, in and through us in the right appointed time, in the Kairos moment. So the first thing is uh, we see this Mary miracle is, you know, the, the Holy Spirit uh, releases things into this earth at the appointed uh, time, though it can be foretold much ahead of the time. It's just for uh, for us to prepare ourselves even as God is releasing or birthing his plan and purposes in our lives. The second one is the work of the Spirit is released through ordinary people. Uh, we uh, see that, you know, uh, God chose a very ordinary virgin, um, you know, to conceive or to bear a son. And it was already prophesied in the Old Testament, Isaiah chapter 7, 7 verse 14. Uh, we see that, you know, behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and you shall call his name uh, Emmanuel. So we see that, you know, uh, God does not, uh, uh, did not choose, uh, you know, somebody who was a very highly educated woman or somebody who was uh, a prince. A princess, uh, you know, of the royal family, but he just chose somebody who was very insignificant, uh, an inexperienced virgin, virgin named um, Mary. Now, you know, uh, there could be questions, okay, you know, why did God choose an uh, inexperienced virgin like Mary? Uh, you know, what if, uh, if, you know, if she had a miscarriage? What if she did not take care of herself during her pregnancy? What if she was not able to handle this whole uh, thing that God is birthing in and through her because she's a virgin? You know, what people would say, people would talk, uh, the stress and everything. Uh, but uh, we see that when God wants to birth some things in our life, you know, uh, the uh, it uh, it's 
the whole thing is dependent on God. The outcome is also dependent on, on God and not on us. All he wants us uh, to do is to be available. He wants us to be obedient, to just uh, uh, be obedient to do what he is uh, asking us to do and just uh, trust in him. Just abandon ourselves in him and just trust in um, him. And that's what we see Mary doing, you know, when uh, the angel came to her and, and reveals uh, what she's going to birth, the plans and purposes of God. Uh, she just makes herself available to God. She says, we read in Luke chapter 1, verse 38, uh, Behold, uh, 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 the maidservant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your uh, word. So we see that she was just willing, obedient, and uh, we know that, you know, the outcome was what God took care of, everything God uh, took care of, and uh, Jesus was born uh, on this earth. Okay, So uh, we see that God is not afraid of birthing his plans, his great big plans and purposes uh, through simple, ordinary people. Uh, but even as he's, he chooses us to birth his, uh, uh, you know, his big divine plans, his mission here on earth, he he gives us his, how to fulfill his mission mandate here on the earth. You know, all he looks at is, uh, you know, how not, he does not look at how educated we are, skilled, talented, confident that we are, but he just chooses ordinary people uh, for the work of his eternal uh, kingdom. And he's just looking for our availability, our obedience, and uh, our, uh, you know, complete trust in him. The third thing is that the work of the spirit uh, must be unadulterated. It must be born purely of his spirit. Uh, we see that in Mary's life as well. Uh, you know, uh, Jesus, uh, the, the Messiah, the son of God was born through a virgin. Um, and, uh, you know, and hence we see that he was born without sin. So every work of God that is released uh, uh, in and through us must be born purely in his, uh, of his spirit. That means it should not have anything of the flesh. And that is why we said that, you know, uh, from the time that God reveals his plan and purposes that he wants to birth in our lives, there can be a, a, a preparation time. We'll look at it uh, in the next chapter, uh, you know, how it took uh, so many years for Moses and Paul, uh, Paul 17 years, you know, or Moses 40 years, the preparation time for them to actually uh, birth uh, the plans and the purposes of God that he had on their um, lives. Why? Because, you know, whatever God wants to be uh, birthed here uh, in his kingdom to extend his kingdom here on earth, he wants it to be pure uh, and it, uh, he does not want anything. Of, uh, uh, it should be unadulterated, born purely of the uh, spirit. And so, you know, uh, uh, he brings us to a place where uh, we are uh, not feeding our carnal nature or the desires of the flesh, but we are actually uh, doing what the Spirit wants us to do. Um, we are totally yielded and submitted to the Holy uh, Spirit. The fourth thing is that the work of the Spirit uh, might be a cause for embarrassment. So we know that, you know, when um, uh, when God chose a virgin, He knew that, you know, she would be she would uh, feel embarrassed. She would go through embarrassment. Um, uh, but we see that, uh, you know, God worked out things. He 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 gave uh, he spoke to mary he gave her the confirmation he also spoke to uh, uh joseph in a vision the angel came and spoke to uh, joseph said do not be afraid to take mary as your wife because what is conceived of her is of the holy spirit he also reveals it to uh, the the important people that mattered in mary's life um, uh, the holy spirit also testified to elizabeth who was uh, mary's uh, relative and so here we see that um, you know although Mary carried in her womb the Son of God um, uh, you know this was going to bring her embarrassment uh, how is she going to explain her pregnancy to her family to her neighbors the people and uh, you know 
to Joseph, who is she's going to be uh, married to. But we see that uh, the Holy Spirit, um, uh, God through the Holy Spirit, reveals uh, it to Joseph and also to Elizabeth. So there are times when, you know, when we are doing the work of God, uh, people may not understand it, people may misunderstand. Uh, this does not mean that, uh, you know, um, uh, we are not carrying uh, or going to birth God's purposes. Um, uh, and it's not that the work of the Holy Spirit is not genuine or the, what the Holy Spirit is revealed to you is not genuine. No, people around us may not understand. But yet in the midst of, uh, you know, the embarrassment, uh, you know, God would uh, uh, reveal his plans to the people who are uh, the most important uh, in your group. You know who can support you who can stand alongside with you who will you know uh, uh carry this uh this god-given vision that he's birthing in you they will carry it along with them uh they will stay around with you uh they will help you encourage you and you know you can press forward to work or the vision that god wants to uh, uh release in and through a birth in and uh, through you so there will be times when people will not understand um, don't be upset with them, don't be angry with them, uh, but just know that, you know, they are not aligned to the things of God. Uh, they are not going to go alongside with you. They can become more of a burden than an encouragement. But just be assured that, you know, if God is birthing this in your life, if this is what is God's plan, he will reveal it to the most important people that, uh, 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 you know, would, would take this, buy this uh, from you and uh, will run along with it. I remember, you know, when, um, uh, uh, when I was... Uh, ministering in a in a group and i was leading this group uh you know a group of children uh god had birthed something birthed something uh, uh, uh something very great something uh, meaningful something purposeful uh and he gave me that 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 vision he, uh, he gave me he showed me what is the end result what is going to happen to a dream to a vision i was quite excited and when i came and uh shared it with uh, you know the children uh they just bought it they just took it they just took hold of it so you know uh, i was uh i knew that this is what god has given it to given to me or he wants to fulfill in the lives of these children because the children bought it the children uh, took hold of it so they were the primary uh you know the group that we were going to be working with and if they were not going to buy it then you know it would be difficult so it's just so amazed to see how god birthed this uh this uh this purpose this plan in my in my heart and when i shared it with the children they just uh, bought it but you know those who are ministering um along with me uh there were a couple of them who did not buy it uh, they were not interested. So I just uh, let them be because, you know, you can't force them. You can't judge them. But they would just come and do the, the other bit that was there. But this specific project that God laid on my heart, he showed me, was not something they, they were involved in. They did not uh, take it on. I just let them be. But there were two or three people uh, who stood, you know, uh, beside me, who helped and encouraged. And, uh, you know, the end result of what God did in and through this whole uh, a perp, this whole uh, a project that he had shown me and he had uh, brought it to light and, you know, he had just uh, given it in my heart. He had entrusted to me, you know, uh, the end result was so powerful, was so beautiful that it really, uh, I didn't have to speak, but it just spoke for itself to people uh, who, uh, who kind of mocked it, who were not interested in it. They were just amazed and, uh, you know, to see how God just worked uh, so beautifully. And the end result was just, just, uh, just God, you know, uh, people could, could easily say that it was God. It was not any human being that could have done, could have brought about everything that people witnessed through uh, how powerfully the children uh, ministered. So, you know, when when God births things in your life, there are times when people will not stand along with you, will not take it, will not buy it. But the most important people, like here we see the Mary miracle. It was Joseph uh, who had to stand beside Mary. So God revealed it to Joseph. And it was... Um, Mary's relative uh, Elizabeth, I think she was very close to 
uh, Elizabeth, because as soon as she hears the angel, uh, uh, what the angel had to birth through Mary, uh, we see that Mary going to, Liz to Elizabeth's house to share it with her. So maybe she's very, very close to her. And we see that uh, the Holy Spirit testified through Elizabeth uh, what, may, what uh, God had purposeful in Mary's life was the divine plan and purpose of God. So God will reveal it to the important people and you can just uh, carry on with what God is uh, birthing in and through your life. And the work of the Spirit, the fifth one, is released through the normal natural uh, process. Um, uh, so we see that, you know, uh, uh, God did not have, uh, you know, day one did not tell Mary, okay, Mary, you're going to have, uh, you're a virgin, but you're going to conceive uh, the Son of God. And, um, uh, you know, uh, day two was, uh, you know, not the full term pregnancy, and day three was not the delivery uh, when the child was born just in three days. But we see that, uh, you know, uh, things happen in the natural process. You know, even though the conception was supernatural, but we see that the work of the Holy Spirit and what God envisioned for the Son of God to be born here on this earth, we see that uh, it took the natural process of pregnancy, the full term of pregnancy, and then uh, the delivery that happened. Okay, so similarly, we see that when uh, God initiates his work in building his kingdom in and through us, who are kingdom builders, uh, you know, we need to co-labor with uh, God. Okay, God gives us his strength, he gives us his grace, he gives us the vision, he gives us the people, he gives us the strategies, uh, he gives us the strength to run with it, the supernatural strength to run with it. Um, he gives us, uh, he, he, he just encourages us, he opens doors for us, he shuts the wrong doors for us. Uh, but, you know, uh, uh, Things are burdened in the in the natural, so it takes the normal natural things of everyday life uh, to release, uh, to birth the plans and purposes of God uh, in our life. So, what does it mean? It means that you know uh, things will not just God will not just tell you day one that okay, this is my uh, this is what I want you to birth. Day two uh, is not you know when you execute it. Day three is not when you see the the full envision the whole reality or see it happening in the natural. But it's it's a process, you know. It's uh, you know, it needs sacrifice. It needs hard work. You need to persevere. Um, you need to plan, organize, manage things. Uh, you'll have to uh, give up a lot of your own personal time. Uh, your you know your per personal preferences. Uh, you'll have to keep at it. You will have to work at it. Run with it. There'll be sometimes you'll have to work long hours. Uh, you know. Uh, you sometimes you have to just uh, you know uh, carry in prayer you need to just engage in in spiritual warfare uh and it it uh, it requires that so it's not that you know when god births something supernatural it's everything is just going to happen automatically no it takes a natural normal process of things in the in the natural world how we labor hard we work hard and that is why you know paul says in first corinthians chapter 15 verse 10 he says you know the grace of god is available with me um you know and his uh, his grace towards me is not in vain but he says but i labored you know, the word labor is hard work, you know. I labored more abundantly than all of them. He's talking about his co-workers, that he labored more uh, than all of his co-workers. But he says, it's not just me, but it's the grace of God that enabled me to labor hard. So when we birth God's purposes, yes, it's supernatural. We receive it. We, we, the, the Holy Spirit reveals the mind of God to us. But it all happens in the natural uh, we have to make the sacrifices work, work hard, organize, plan, uh, run with it. Uh, you know, it takes time, energy, a lot of effort, and a lot of hard work. Okay. The sixth thing is we might encounter closed doors uh, until we reach God's appointed um, place. So we see that, you know, um, uh, Mary uh, uh, had the supernatural encounter with the with the angel and the supernatural childbirth, and uh, she thought, you know, may have thought, you know, along with Joseph, that everything would go easy, you know, because the Son of God, God will take care of everything, uh, you know, uh, will plan everything, will execute everything. All they need to do is just carry things, be obedient. But here we see that uh, it was not so. 
right? When they had to uh, travel uh, all the way to Bethlehem, you know, they would have thought, okay, you know, there will be an inn for them. There will be a nice good place, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, an excellent place, maybe a five-star uh, uh, accommodation for them to stay. But uh, we see that, you know, there was... Uh, they could have been, sh they could have gone through shock, uh, you know, disappointment, discouragement, uh, just seeing that there was no inn available anywhere. And Mary would have thought, "Is am I carrying the child of God in my womb? And is uh, God going, you know, uh, had this divine supernatural plan, uh, what he's going to execute? Uh, and finally, where was the Son of God uh, born? Not in a five-star accommodation, but in a cattle shed, in a in a cattle trough, uh, he was placed. And so we um, see that you know sometimes when uh, we uh, give birth to God's plans and purposes uh, in our lives, that He wants to be birthed uh, uh, to, for the extension of His kingdom, we can face discouragement. Uh, everything will not go easy, will not be smooth, there will be closed doors. Um, but, you know, those closed doors are actually that God is directing us to the right place, the right time, uh, where he wants to position ourselves rightly so he can birth his divine plans and uh, purposes. And we need to keep moving. Even though there are many closed doors, it doesn't mean we doubt, we trust God, we keep moving we go, uh, till we reach the place where he wants us to be positioned rightly so we can receive his uh, divine uh, provision, his divine grace, his divine favor, divine provision, uh, pr promotion, and uh, it's, a, it's a right place for us to birth his uh, divine plan and uh, will, okay? The seventh thing is that the work of the Holy Spirit often has a simple, humble uh, beginning. So we see that, uh, you know, Jesus was born in, um, not to a, a princess, he was not born to a prince, uh, he was not born uh, in a rich home. Uh, he was not given a palace to be born in or uh, the best inn uh, in Bethlehem. But uh, it was, you know, just a very, uh, uh, you know, ordinary uh, uh, virgin, uh, a carpenter uh, like Joseph, a cattle stall, a cattle shed uh, where God released his... Um, uh, his divine uh, plan and purpose that he has, uh, you know, he had even foreordained uh, before the foundations of the world. So God releases his work in small ways, uh, but these small beginnings are still the work of God. And, uh, you know, they can impact the whole world. We see the impact that Christ's life and what he did on the cross, how it impacted the whole world, how it still impacts and will impact the rest of the world. Uh, world. So, you know, uh, even though God births his plans and purposes to ordinary people in simple ways, simple beginnings, uh, we, we know that it's not by might nor by power, but by his spirit. Uh, Zechariah chapter 4 verse 6. And uh, also we read in that same chapter of Zechariah chapter 4, uh, in the verse 10, we read that, uh, you know, who has despised the day of small things? So don't despise this day of small beginnings, the day of small or of humble beginnings. Uh, sometimes we think, you know, when God has given us a plan and a purpose, uh, birthing something in our life, uh, something very exciting, something very great, uh, you know, uh, it can begin very small. It can be can begin very insignificant. There can be struggles. There can be challenges. Things will not go very smoothly. But you know, uh, the, if you look at uh, the end result. You know, it will be something great uh, that God is um, birthing in and through us. But the process uh, through which he takes us through is can be challenging, can be difficult, uh, but we can still experience God's grace, his provision, and uh, to come to a place where we can position ourselves right to experience the supernatural favor of God. So the eighth thing is the work of the Spirit has to be protected and uh, nurtured which is the last thing we see that, uh, you know, after uh, the baby Jesus was born, you know, we see that um, uh, the baby had to be fed and cleaned and taken care of. Um, uh, so, um, you know, Mary could have thought, okay, this is the son of God. 
you know, the angels will come and uh, minister to him and take care of him. Uh, you know, if uh, Joseph and Mary would have done that, just abandoned the, the son of God, that would have been uh, foolish on their part. But they were still obedient. They still trusted God. Uh, they still did what, uh, you know, what God wanted them to do in terms of taking care of the baby, nurturing the baby, protecting the baby uh, from every harm and danger. And we see how uh, God reveals uh, ahead of time, uh, you know, to Joseph in a dream uh, saying, flee to Egypt, uh, stay there till uh, the one who wants to destroy the child is no more. And then we see that, uh, uh, you know, at the right time, God tells uh, Joseph to go back uh, and chose uh, to go back to Galilee and they go back to, uh, to Nazareth. So we see that, you know, uh, Mary and Joseph nurtured the child and they also protected uh, him. And uh, we read in, um, in uh, Luke chapter 2, verse 40, that the child grew and became strong and spirit was filled with wisdom and the grace of God was upon uh, him. So, you know, the work of the spirit has to be protected and nurtured. Uh, it protected means it has to be protected from people who, um, you know, bring in their own agendas, their own uh, schemes, their own plans, uh, people not with the right motives, people who, uh, you know, are causing disunity, disharmony, uh, are kind of being a discouragement to you. You can't fight them. Uh, so it's better to just, uh, you know, protect uh, uh, what God is birthing in and through you. Just leave them aside. Just leave them to God. God will take care of them. And also we need to work hard. Uh, we need to plan. We need to organize. We need to, you know, wrestle in prayer. Uh, ask God what he wants us to do each step. Show us the next step guide us and lead us, bring the right people. Uh, and we need to nurture the work of God, the, uh, the plans and the purposes of God or what he wants to birth in and through our lives. Okay. So that is uh, very beautifully uh, portrayed to us through um, Jesus' birth here on this earth, through uh, Mary and Joseph and uh, looking at how, uh, you know, the Holy Spirit works and births the things uh, in our lives, even as we go about uh, building God's kingdom. Okay, so any questions anyone has about uh, chapter 3? Any questions? I hope you found that uh, Mary Miracle... Uh, you know, the points that we learned, uh, uh, interesting, uh, you know, very uplifting, encouraging, and gives us so much of, uh, you know, in-depth, um, uh, you know, uh, points and, uh, and how we can birth uh, God's plans and purposes here on earth. Okay, there's no questions. Okay. So what we are learning, I hope, uh, is meaningful, is purposeful, and uh, also when, you know, uh, some of you might also be in that place where uh, God has already revealed to you what he wants to birth in and through your life, to build his kingdom. Uh, some of you are already, um, you know, working on it, uh, building on it. Um, but, you know, I hope these some of these insights can help you. Uh, to understand how God works, okay? Okay, there's a song here about the, all over the world, the spirit is moving. Anyone knows that, this song, all over the world? Anyone knows it? Very uh, old uh, chorus. No one knows? Okay, it's, it's very simple. It says, all over the world, the spirit is moving. All over the world, as the prophet said it would be. Hallelujah. All over the world, there's a mighty revelation of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. All over his church, God's spirit is moving. 
all over his church as the prophet said it would be hallelujah all over his church there's a mighty revelation of the glory of the lord as the waters cover the sea right here in this place the spirit is moving right here in this place as the prophet said it would be hallelujah right here in this place there's a mighty revelation of the glory of the lord as the waters cover the sea so God's spirit is moving and, uh, you know, with mighty revelations. So, you know, if you want to choose to be a kingdom builder, you desire to be a kingdom builder, uh, you know, uh, God's spirit, even as he's moving, looking for those uh, uh, who are willing to stand in the gap, those who are willing to, you know, build God's kingdom, uh, God will reveal his plans and purposes uh, will birth his supernatural plans and purposes and we can be assured that you know God will take care of the outcome and uh, the process is going to uh, yes be challenging at times, times but it will be um, exciting it will just be wonderful to just see how God uh, works and moves okay so if there's no questions we'll move on to chapter four uh, the nature of a God-given uh, vision uh, so, you know, we know that the Holy Spirit reveals the mind of God to us. He reveals the plans and the purposes of God. He gives us the vision, uh, but how is uh, uh, God's vision, uh, you know, given to us? Well, how, how does God go about it? Okay. What's the nature of how he gives us uh, his uh, vision? Okay. Uh, we know that uh, we are in the end times. Uh, the prophecy in Joel, uh, which we also see in Acts chapter 2, verses 17 and 18, it says, you know, God says, In the last days I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Uh, your sons and daughters shall prophesy, your uh, young men shall see visions, your old men shall dream dreams. Uh, and he says that, uh, you know, on everyone I will pour out my spirit and they shall uh, prophesy. So we know that it uh, we are in the end times. It's a time when uh, there's going to be, uh, uh, you know, a, a greater uh, revelation of God's plans and purposes, uh, true visions and uh, dreams uh, through which he's going to birth his ideas, plans, purposes, and goals, uh, his strategies. Um, uh, and, you know, the way the Holy Spirit is going to birth it is uh, through uh, dreams and visions where he gives us an idea, he gives us a thought or uh, just a picture that we see um, or he just tells us up, uh, in our hearts, uh, he makes us passionate about uh, something. And all of these things uh, we refer to as a God-given vision. So how God you know, he shows it to us through, uh, uh, gives us an idea, he gives us a thought, a picture, uh, stirs our hearts up to something and our heart is stirred up but, and does not stop till we, you know, take hold of what God is taking hold of us, doing what God is taking hold of um, us, okay? So the Spirit of God, uh, you know, communicates the plans and the purposes of God to us and how does he do, do it? Uh, it's through the inner witness. Uh, the inner witness comes through uh, the, you know, uh, impression that is in our hearts. Uh, the Holy, uh, Holy Spirit can, uh, or if God can birth uh, his plans and purposes through his word. Um, uh, the, uh, the God can birth his plan and purposes through the voice of the Holy Spirit, which comes to us uh, through the inner spiritual voice that comes through words. We can, uh, we can just, uh, you know, sense uh, God speaking to us, the Holy Spirit speaking to us. Uh, it can also come through uh, uh, dreams and visions. Now, all of these things you've already studied uh, in uh, in in um, uh, in your first year when you when you studied uh, the book uh, Receiving God's Guidance. You looked at all of these things. Uh, so just basically reiterating uh, a few points here. Uh, 
so we see that you know the spirit of god communicates god's uh, plans purposes his ideas his strategies uh, through dreams and visions and uh, in two dreams and visions he reveals it to us through ideas to thoughts to pictures uh, which he instills in uh, us so some of the dreams and visions uh, that god gives us is not just heavenly entertainment but it is something that uh, through which god is directing us or leading us in his plans and purposes or something that he's revealing uh, to us to execute here on um, uh, okay and god wants us uh, uh, and is waiting for us uh, to fulfill what he is showing us through uh, dreams and visions so our goal in this uh, this whole chapter is to understand how god imparts his vision how god uh, takes us on his journey to see his vision fulfilled in our lives uh, and in the purpose uh, and in the process you know how to carry out the purposes of his uh, kingdom okay uh, we'll stop here we'll come back and continue we'll go for our break and i'll see you after our break okay thank you everyone